We've deconstructed the philosophy of true data ops into seven core pillars. The first of these is ELT and the spirit of ELT. Most people are familiar with the concept of ELT, extract, load, then transform as a way of loading the data into the data warehouse in its rawest possible form and therefore maximizing the number of future use cases that we can achieve with this data. The spirit of ELT takes us further and it looks at not just keeping the data in its rawest form, but also things like keeping a history and change of the data over time for the same reason. It maximizes the number of future use cases we can meet with that data without having to go and change any of our ingestion. And indeed, when we talk about changes over time, by the time you realize you needed to track changes over time, it's too late. It's something you can only do in advance. Agility CICD for many people is the core or what they consider to be the core of data ops and indeed DevOps. And this is fundamentally around moving the source of truth in the same way that for a web application, the web server hasn't for a long time been the source of truth. The web server is an engine that the source of truth gets deployed to, the source of truth being in the code repository. For us to achieve any of the real value of data ops, we have to move to a world where the source of truth is defined in source systems and in a code repository, and the data lake or data warehouse are the engine on which that is deployed to but it's deployed repeatedly, it's deployed regularly, it's deployed in different branches, and the data warehouse becomes essentially an engine, very clever engine, but an engine that executes the source of truth, not the source of truth itself. Component design and maintainability is critically important, and this is something the data world has done badly for many, many years. In the software world, taking even the simplest requirement of adding two numbers together, you even 10 years ago did not finish at, I have a piece of code that says two plus two equals four. That was the start of it. That was the functional requirements met, but there were a long list of non-functional requirements about maintainability, about ease of use, about simplicity, about debuggability, about testability, about writing tests for it, that all these non-functional requirements all had to be met before a piece of code was regarded as fit for purpose. In the data world, historically, as soon as you have the data equivalent of two plus two equals four, people have said, right, that's it, move on, without considering the long-term maintainability. And this has had a major, major impact on the total cost of ownership of data projects and has caused the TCO to be two, three, four times over the life of a project than it really should be, with just a little bit more thought and care taken up front the total cost of ownership of a well-designed system should be dramatically lower. Code reuse should be lower. Proliferation of bugs will be much lower. Environment management is one of the pieces where data ops is most different from DevOps. In environment management, we think about spinning up new web servers for different branches and things like that. The challenge in the data world is that we can't just spin up a new data warehouse. We also need data to go into it. And so the way that we, for example, use to take production systems and clone them as a starting point for QA systems and dev systems and feature branch systems. And most importantly, the way that we allow every developer or every data ops engineer when they are creating a new feature or creating a new capability to create a feature branch of their code or configuration. And at the same time to create a feature branch of the data warehouse to operate that against is one of the most critical pieces and the most valuable pieces of data ops. Governance, security and change control is probably the one that is most aligned with traditional DevOps because the requirements here are no different. We need to be able to see basically down to the individual line of code, to the individual line of configuration, even down to the individual character, who changed what, when, where, why, what are the things they changed at the same time, who peer reviewed that and approved it, what the automated test results were when they made that change, when it was deployed to dev, when it was deployed to QA, when it's deployed to production. That's the most sort of definitive set of governance and, and, and change control requirements that you can have. But we also have capabilities around anonymization, which also relate to the collaboration self-service, which I'll talk about in, in a moment. Automated testing and monitoring is, in my view, probably the most important, but also the least well done. In a recent report by the Eckerton Group, even of organizations who say they're doing data ops today, less than a fifth have any solution at all for automated testing for data ops. Why is that? because it's difficult. And because it's difficult, it hasn't really been done well at all. But automated testing is, if you look back to the software world and where the software world was 15, even 20 years ago, and you look at the two biggest things that enabled the software world to go through a two to three order of magnitude efficiency improvement, one of them is agility and CICD, and the other one is automated testing. Agility and CICD are relatively easy to get for data projects, for data ops. Automated testing is somewhat more difficult. But in essence, what we're saying here is when I make a change and I'm proposing to deploy my change, how do I know that my change, A, works, but B, much more importantly, how do I know that my change will not destroy, disrupt, or in any way negatively impact the thousands of changes that have come before mine? And thirdly, how do I make sure that the thousands of changes that come after mine don't break my code? And that's what 
automated testing in particular, automated data regression testing does. And finally, collaboration and self-service. This is a very important area, but one of the least developed areas. As people look at becoming data-driven businesses, data warehouses and, and data lakes have helped. The mantra has always been break down the silos. And that's exactly what they do from a technical perspective. I can get data from multiple places, multiple departments, multiple source systems, put them into one data warehouse. But actually, when you look at it, an awful lot of organizations then put up silos. They don't put up physical silos. They put up permissions and organizational silos. They say, this data in HR can't be accessed by anybody because there's something sensitive in it. This data from sales operations can't be accessed by anybody because it's got something sensitive in it. So most of the benefits of different departments benefiting from each other's data and departments being able to do analysis using data across multiple source systems actually in a lot of cases doesn't materialize. And the reason is because some element of the data is sensitive. So in terms of collaboration and self-service, we believe one of the most key things here is within a framework that enables all of the same governance and security that we would expect, the ability for organizations to create essentially different versions of their data. So the HR department can have an HR data set, you might call it a product ID, but the, within that they can create different versions. We could call them SKUs. And each of those different versions has a different anonymization. So the version HR themselves see might be the raw data. There might be a version that executive management can see, which has got all but one or two pieces of information. It may be one or two pieces of information have been mastered or deprecisioned. And there might be a third version, which the entire company can see, where all employee sensitive details have been removed, but it's still available for other organizations to analyze, to join their own data sets onto. And that's the start of collaboration and self-service.